Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm Mike Delisio. Welcome back to another edition of The Delisio Factor. It is lovely to be here. It is a, a beautiful day in South Florida. And uh, right now, working without air conditioning. So if I devolve in front of your eyes, if I become a pool of sweat by the end of this, you won't know whether it's because I'm so excited about what's happening in the game or if I simply have lost all of my vital fluids. I want to take a look in the chat because you are always fantastic about telling me if the audio and video is good. Uh, audio is a bit echoey, so here, let's fix that. Let's, uh, let's try this. James, give it about 20 seconds or so and we'll see if the audio fixes... Uh, it's always a, there's a 50-50 shot. It's like a USB port, right? There's a 50-50 chance you're going to do it the right way. I inevitably will do it the wrong way. So let's see if this helps out with the sound a little bit. And uh, I'll give it a moment or two. See if that uh, kind of works itself out. All right. So while I'm waiting to find out if uh, all is good in the sound and video, sounds amazing. All right. Okay, good. Um, Final Girl. So Final Girl is a game that I absolutely adore. It's a solo-only game that is kind of built around an earlier solo game um, from the same company, from Van Ryder Games, that was called Hostage Negotiator. And this has been retooled and rethemed to a kind of about the classic horror movies, okay? And so uh, the idea is that you are the final girl that is facing off against some type of a killer or a baddie in some way, and you are trying to save some victims if you can, but you're also just trying to survive. And your win condition is basically defeating the the bad guy, the, the killer, all right? Um, the lose condition is if you run out of health, all right? And Final Girl is a game that came in a series. It was a series one. And so the way the game works is that you've got a core box and then you take a feature box that could have, you know, it might be kind of themed something similar to Friday the 13th or something similar to Halloween. And you put those together and you kind of create your experience. Now, Final Girl season two uh, was kickstarted and it is just, I think it's very soon going to be delivered to backers. I, I backed pretty much all in in season two. And we're getting a sneak peek. Thankfully, we're getting a sneak peek because we got a copy of this particular feature box from the designer of this particular box, Julie Ahern, gave us a sneak peek. This is the Big Bad Wolf. So let me take a look, make sure everything looks good here. Dulcet tones now at 100%. Fantastic. Um, let's go over to the table. All right, so today we are playing against the Big Bad Wolf. There is the Big Bad Wolf right there. And so that is going to be our, our foe. And I'm going to be playing as Red. Now, uh, Red will have a miniature, but we don't have access to the Season 2 miniatures yet. So I'm using Selena as a proxy. Selena is going to be my Red. And here, this Red Meeple, that's the Big Bad Wolf. All right, so on the board... We've got a, a killer board, basically, which is the Big Bad Wolf, and we've got our location board, which is the storybook wood. So I'm playing both aspects of this feature box. I'm playing with the Big Bad Wolf, and I'm playing with the storybook wood's location. There are a few special rules with, uh, with both of those that I'll talk about just uh, briefly in a moment. But I am going to go with an assumption that either you know a little bit about Final Girl or you'll figure it out as I go along because I'm not going to be doing a rules teach up front. I want to get to the game to make sure that we have enough time to, to get through, um, which may be very easy. I might die very quickly, uh, but it also may take a little bit of time if I'm able to kind of work things, uh, work things through a little bit. All right, so uh, let's just talk briefly about the, the kind of the new aspects of the two parts of the board. First off, Storybook Woods. Um, Storybook Woods has fewer spaces than you'll see in some of the locations, all right? But uh, while that may make it seem easier, as it says, they can become very dangerous very quickly. A couple of things. We've got some bridges, all right, that are uh, unique to this location, all right? Here's a bridge here. They are rickety bridges, all right? 
Uh, so we got one here. We've got one, not seeing one there, here and here for sure. Boom, boom. Making sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, there should be a third, I think, rickety bridge here. We've got one. We've got two. Oh, and three, right there. Boom, boom, and boom. Those are rickety bridges. And that means that I can only take one victim along with me. If, uh, if I, normally when you move, you can take up to two victims with you, but across those rickety bridges, you can only take one. Also, there is a raft item that I might be, uh, that I might find. And if I do so, we'll deal with that when it comes, but it's a way to help you move around the board a little bit. All right. So that's really the only difference. There's no special setup or anything with the storybook woods, three locations. And I randomly drew two knives and a hatchet. So three weapons that are potentially available to me if I can do a successful search action in the corresponding locations. All right, Big Bad Wolf right here. The kind of the special rules for the Big Bad Wolf is that there are two modes that the Big Bad Wolf will be in. They'll either be in hunt mode or slay mode. And it starts the game in hunt mode, which is represented right down there, hunt mode, all right? they're going to do particular actions based upon what mode they are in. And um, as the game goes on, it may change from hunt mode to slay mode. And as you might expect, they're going to be doing more killing at that point. All right, I had a random setup card. I have it set up as the way that this was um, telling me to. I drew my first event, which happened to be one that does not affect me, thankfully. I drew the fairy ring, which says, all victims at the Glen disappear. Not killed, just somewhere else. Remove them from the game and do not increase bloodlust. Well, in this particular setup, the Glen is where the Big Bad Wolf started. So nothing happened with that first event. I just discard that card and we get ready to go. Uh, I had a question uh, asking whether Final Girl is better than Hostage, nego hostage Negotiator. Well, that's of course gonna be a matter of taste, but if you're asking me my taste, I like it a lot more. Uh, than Hostage Negotiator. I like the theme better. I like the uh, the positional aspect of the board. Uh, they're both, you know, good games, but I love Final Girl. All right, here we go. I've got my starting hands of cards, which is are the zero cost cards, zero time cards. And I've got a little, I use the back of the book here. I'll just leave this out so you can kind of have that there to look at. And it gives you a nice turn summary. And so what I'm going to be doing first is taking my action phase where I choose to play as many of these cards as I want to. So there's a couple of things here that I'm thinking about. Number one is I'm in a location right now, the gingerbread house. I would love to be able to get a successful search action here and gain the knife. However, to do so, I need a search card. I don't start the game with a search card in my hand. Um, so I might slow play this a little bit and, and just maybe gain some focus if I can and save up and then during my, during my planning phase, buy a sprint card, or excuse me, a search card um, so that I can try to get one of the knives uh, or try to get, yeah, the one that's set up for the gingerbread house. All right, hello everyone that's saying hello. So here are the cards really quickly. I've got a weak attack, which I'm not gonna be using right now, I don't think. Short rest, which heals, don't need that. Walking, two, two walk cards and two focus cards. All right, so I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna to try to gain some focus. So I'm gonna play that into my player area. I consult this area here and it's telling me that because I started at the level five here, I'm gonna be rolling two dice, all right? So I'm gonna be rolling two dice. The way this works is if you look at the card, it's gonna tell you what happens with two successes, one success, or no success. These dice are set up in such a way that you've got two misses, two complete misses, one, two hits, and then two of this symbol, which means that you can discard two other cards to turn it into a success, all right? So that's the distribution on these dice. Uh, I showed you that card. I'm playing the focus card. Here we go, my first roll. And if anybody has seen me play games before, you'll know 
that um, rolling dice is not my forte. So why do I love a game where you roll dice that much? Because I'm a glutton for punishment. Here we go, rolling up, trying to gain a little bit of focus. What will focus do? Focus will allow me to lower the horror meter, which the lower it goes, the more chance you've got of rolling more dice. And it also will gain time, which is used to buy cards. So here we go, first focus card. And I did exactly what I normally do. Boo, 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 boo. That's fantastic. So. No successes, lower the time by two. Great job, Mike. You are the real star. Do I try it again? Do I try it again? I am a glutton for punishment. I'm gonna try to focus again. Here we go. Am I a horror movie fan? Yes, I am. I am a horror movie fan. That probably helps. Uh, I don't think you have to be to like the game, but I certainly think it helps. Here we go. Come on now. I got one success. All right, one success I can live with. I lower the, the horror meter to four and I lose one time. All right, well, could have been better. I was really hoping to gain some time, but that's all right. Now, I can hang on to these cards. As long as I never have more than 10 cards, I'm okay. So I will probably hang on to these cards and I will go into the planning phase where I can now use this time, this three time I have, to purchase action cards. So I will do that. I will purchase this search card because I know I want one of these to, to try to get that knife. All right, so that goes down two. And then I'll probably go ahead and take this close call card, which allows me to get a reroll. That will take my last remaining time. So I've done my planning phase where I've purchased action cards. I reset time to six. The action cards in the discard pile go back to the tableau. All right, so these go to the zero cost cards. All right, and then um, that is it for the planning phase. Now we go to the killer phase where we resolve the killer action and then we draw a terror card. All right, so we look up here to resolve the killer's action. All right, this says if in the hunt mode, which they are, they're gonna go towards the closest victim, which is either the final girl or a victim, and they're gonna move. Right now they can move up to three. You look at that on their bloodlust meter here. So right here, this, um, the killer is right here and they're going to go towards the closest. Uh, I need to remind myself if there are ties, if I get a choose, I think I get a choose. Bum, 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 bum. It's the number of spaces it can move. Yeah. Oh, it'll be, if there's a tie, choose the group that has the most victims present. And then if there's still a tie, reveal, go to the game ambiguity thing. So basically, they are within one space of both of these, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and send it towards grandma's house, all right? So it moves here. Move toward a victim. If it was in slay mode, it would have killed. All right, so resolve killer action, draw a terror card, here we go. Terror card, active Taylor terror card. It picked me up and I was helpless. Move the killer two spaces towards grandma's house already in grandma's house, picking up and moving one victim with the killer if able, then draw an event card. You need to, no, I already flipped the opening event. Uh, so I showed this at the beginning. The opening event was this card, this fairy ring, but uh, it didn't affect anything, so I just discarded it. You may not have seen that at the beginning, but yeah, I already did do that. All right, um, so the killer does not move because it's already in grandma's house. And then we're going to do an event. Here we go. Furry friends. The woodland creatures realize you are helping keep them safe, but they are making noise wherever you go. The killer moves one space closer to you. If the killer is in your space or on an adjacent space, raise the bloodlust. All right, so I'm up here. It's going to go right back where it was. It's going to go back to the glen. It is not in my space or an adjacent space, so I discard this card. That could have been much worse, all right? That actually worked out okay for me. Um, now we go to the panic phase. If a victim was killed this turn, you would panic, which would mean you're rolling dice and having them run away, but they did not. Upkeep phase will not apply right now. All right, so you saw a complete turn there. You saw me go, I bought some cards, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, drink o Walta. You guys are already talking about season three in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for it too. Um, but yeah, I want, I'm, I'm, 
I'm very much looking forward to everything that happens in season one. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try to search here. I re oh, wait a minute. First of all, oh yeah, yeah. I can get these on my next turn. All right, I'm gonna search. I'm gonna try to roll better than I did before. I would really, really, really like to get that knife. Okay, I can live with this. This means that if I uh, discard two cards, I can take the top item of my choice. The other option I have is to play my close call card, but I don't think I'm going to yet. I'm gonna go ahead and burn a couple of cards. I don't see myself attacking, so I'm gonna discard that, and I will probably not need to rest, so I will discard that. So that those two cards discarded turn into a success, which now means take the top item card of your choice. Hello, the knife. I'm in Gingerbread House, yes. Now, putting that in my hand. What's cool about the knife is it says if you have a knife in each hand, you can use both when attacking, so I would love to get over to the village, which is right here, and get the other knife. That would be pretty boss. All right. Got that. All right, so now I'm probably gonna move, try to um, take some of these victims along with me and maybe get them to an exit location. You see these green spots here and here. These are both exit locations. And if I can take them with me safely, then I can start putting them on my final girl card, which will give me some immediate boons. And then if I can do all of them, I flip it over and I'm going to get a ultimate ability, which is basically once per action phase, if an enemy is within two spaces of you, you can move one space for free. So it'd be nice to be able to do that. Let's go ahead and play a walk card. See what happens. I'll just leave this here. All right, whoa, look at that, two successes. Wait a minute, do I need to, first I need to check if I needed to search. I do need to move the time down. I almost forgot that. Got that. All right, now I can move up to two spaces and lose one time. So I'm gonna go one and two. Now unfortunately, I'm gonna try to walk again, but if I go across, I'm only gonna be able to bring one with me because that's a rickety bridge, all right? So let's walk again. I did move down, did I, uh, six, five, four, I did, okay. One success, I can live with one success. Move up to one space, I only need to move one space and then lower the time. So I'm gonna bring one with me because I only can with that rickety bridge. And now, because I'm in an exit space, I can take this uh, victim. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Take any top item card, you think? Yes, I didn't even think about that. I've got both knives. Woo, yeah, baby. That's pretty fantastic. I love everything about that. I'm gonna hang on to my close call card. Look at that, second turn of the game, I've got two knives in my hand. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think I've done that part correctly. I spent the time I needed. And now I have played all the action cards I'm gonna play. Purchase action cards, I've got three. So the first thing I can do is I can immediately take these zero cost cards back into my hand because why not? Um, I cannot purchase any cards of type that I played this turn. Um, so I've got three to spend. Is there any possibility that the killer is gonna get to me and kill? I don't think so. So, a distraction would be wonderful. That's a three cost card. I'm gonna bring a distraction card into my hand. Spend all three, bring it back up. These now go back to where they were. Four, and then the search goes back, right? Yep, okay, killer. They are going to move towards the closest victim. They're moving up to three, which I'm in the same exact situation they were in before. So they are gonna go back to grandma's house. All right, and then we are going to draw a terror card. Here we go. Have some sweets. Place two new victims in the gingerbread house. All right, here we go. Let me go grab a couple of victims here. Two more victims go into the gingerbread house. Boom, boom. 
If you are on a item spot, you may spend two time to take the top item card. I am not, although that is lovely as well. And then we do an event. Oh, I just primrose flowers. This is looks like a um, persistent event. Whenever a victim en en enters the meadow or glen, which is here or here, they immediately panic. Okay, so whenever they enter the meadow or the glen, I need to remember that they're going to immediately panic. All right? Okay, so I've done that. No victims were killed, so I don't have to panic any victims. All right, and now I'm working with these cards. I've got a couple of focus. So I'm really going to be trying to lower my horror meter and raise some time. I'm gonna be spending this turn to try to get to a place where the horror meter is lower, I'm rolling more dice. All right, so let's play the distraction card first. A Couple of reasons why, because I have cards that I can discard if I need to and I have my close call card to play. All right, here we go. I'm rolling two dice. I would love two, um, two successes would get me lower two on the distraction meter and raise two time. Look at that! Boo, 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 boo! Hello, everything is coming up Delicio. Two, bam, bam, move up to, hello. Golly, this can't last folks. This can't last. All right, I'm doubling down. I'm going for focus. I'm going for focus. And yeah, I knew it couldn't last. Two of those, do I go ahead and spend these to try to get myself into the three die. I'm doing it. I'm gonna go down to six. I'm gonna re-roll both. Look at that. Does me nothing. Two and two. All right, so unfortunately, no successes on this because I don't have enough dice to do it. To I don't have enough cards to, to discard to make either of those a success. I go down. So I went from eight down to four and I still stayed there. That's a little bit closer to what I'm used to, all right? I have this one focus card left. I could just kind of go all in and see if I somehow roll, but I think it's more likely that I'm gonna lose time. So I'll probably hold on to that focus card for now, all right? Don't speak too soon, Delicio, you're right, you're right. I'll probably just hedge my bets there, hang on to this one focus card, and then uh, let's see what I'm gonna purchase. So. I'm here, I, with these knives, I wouldn't mind going in and trying to do an attack, but I only have a weak attack that's gonna be coming back to me. I can't afford a critical blow. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe trying to get some more of these victims into, into safe spots, but eventually I have to start going, I mean, you only win the game by taking out the big bad wolf, and I, I don't know if I can slow play this too much. If I've got four to spend, do I sprint? Do I get a sprint? And then a guard, maybe? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna buy a sprint for two, and I'm gonna buy a guard in case they're able to attack me. It may be stupid, but I don't care. I've never claimed to be smart. All right, this goes back to six. These get discarded. So this close call goes back, focus goes Wait, these all come to me. First of all, I'll do those first. This goes back and then distraction goes back. You have the order of that is important. Okay, I think I did it right though. They only got the one I think, I'm not sure what that is responding to, but if there's something I need to change, just let me know. All right, uh, so that was my planning phase. I still have less than 10 cards in hand. Now we're gonna do the killer phase. They're gonna move towards the closest victim. Uh, they, are they are already in a spot with a victim, so I don't believe they're going to move here. All right. And now we're going to do a terror card. All right, here we go. S they are in stalk mode. Move towards the closest. Oh, this stinks. Move towards the closest victim. And then all that work I did to knock that horror level down. But if I hadn't done that, then I would have been much closer to only rolling one die. Oh, man. That is rough. Rough, rough, rough. Well, he's, you know. 
Okay, if they had been in slay mode, they would have taken two attack actions, which would have killed one of those, but... All right. Bummer, bummer, bummer. All that work. Look, can't, can't, can't uh, cry about it yet. So far, no killing has happened yet, so I'm kind of lucky in that, in that sense, because they're, they're not killing in the stalk mode, or track mode, I should call it. All right. Um... What is my favorite season one set so far? I think I like the, um, I can never remember the actual names of them, but, but basically the Freddy Krueger set where you go through the boiler room. I think that's probably my favorite. I don't know. I don't think there's a bad set though. I really like all of them. I really do mean that. Um, crowd surfing is on later. Yes, James, just like normal. All right. Um, so panic phase, no upkeep phase. Now we're back to my action phase. All right. Here we go. I'm going to start going. I'm, I'm just going towards the killer. I want to get some blood. All right. So if I move, how far away am I? From? I'm pretty far away from grandma's house. One, two, three. I'm four spots away from grandma's house. But I'm going to sprint. Or do I focus? No, I'm going to sprint first. All right. Here we go. We're going to start rolling dice and hope for the best. I'd love to be able to move up to three spaces. Let's see what happens. All right, so I've got one success and I can spend two cards to get a second success. If I, spend, if I go two, I'd go one, two, and then I could walk. No, I think I'm going to go ahead and spend. Oh, man. Nope, play it safe, Mike. Move up to two spaces. Just do that. One, two, and I'm bringing them with me. Although maybe I want to leave that one there because it's closer to the exit. I am not, I'm not going to bring that with me. Um, so I've done that. Now I'm going to play the walk. See what happens here. Okay, so I've got one success. I can make it two. One success would move me one space. Two, yeah, here's what we're doing. I'm going to spend a couple of cards because I want to keep the attack. I want to keep the guard. I'll get rid of the walk and focus to move two spots and spend a time. I'm not, I'm probably going to leave that victim there and go right here. Hello, big bad wolf. Hello. All right. Now. Here's where we're going for an attack. Now, I'm hoping to turn this into a three-point attack because if I get two hits on it with this weak attack card, that does a damage to the Big Bad Wolf. But I've got the knife, and it says if you've got a knife in each hand, you can use both when attacking. These modify for an extra hit each. I love everything about that. Here we go. Weak attack. Weak attack. Come on, Mike. That is going to be that. Okay, so with one success, I can do three damage and I would lose one health. I only have five to start with. I don't know that I hate that. If I spend both of these cards, then I could get that three and I don't take any hits. But I'm kind of keeping these cards that protect me in case I get wrecked on my turn. This is a retaliate. This is basically a response card. If they try to attack me, I can try to ignore all or ignore up to two. And this is a healing card. Boy, um, I'm not sure whether it's best to just take that hit. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the hit, keep the one success, and do three damage to the big bad wolf because one for the hit, two more for the knife. Knives, uh, plural. Bam! I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good about that. For this turn. All right. This goes back. Now, I've put myself in a very vulnerable position because now I'm in the spot with the big bad wolf. Who knows what's going to happen during their terror uh, card? Who knows what's going to happen? All right. So, uh, now I'm going to do the planning phase. If I played that correctly, and I think I did... Um, I have four to spend. 
So I could even get a retaliate card, but I think I think I'm just going to be I'm start wailing. Just start wailing on him. I'm going to spend four for a Furious Strike. That goes into my hand. This Focus comes into my hand. Go back up to six. Put these back. Zero, 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 zero. And a Sprint back into the Sprint spot. Kill, kill, kill. That's the plan, Jester J. Joker. That's the plan. All right. Yeah, someone said Retaliate, but I've already got a guard. I considered retaliate. Trust me, I did because ignore both and... Is that better? Is retaliate better than the Furious Strike? Because that has to be on a response card. I'm not going to do it. I don't know if it's gonna, if they're going to hit me this turn. I have no idea. All right. Um, so, that was that. So now we're going to do this. They're not moving because they're already in a spot with both a victim and a final girl. Now we turn over the terror card and here's where we see what happens. All right. Make sure I'm doing this right. Killer action, draw a terror card, yes. Okay, out of the woods. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next. Otherwise, all victims that are not in your space move one space towards the village. Okay, where is the village? Village is up here. So all victims that aren't in my space move toward the village. Let's start here. They're going there. They're going there. They're going there. 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 There, there, there. I think I did that right. Okay? Then, I am the final girl is the target. They're going to move. They're not because they're already there. And they are going to attack. And I'm going to play a guard. All right? I'm going to play a guard here. Uh, if I get even one success, I'm okay. I have to spend two to play it. Right? No, no, I don't. That was two to get it. I got one success, which is good enough, because they would only do one damage to me. I blocked it. All right, so playing that guard card, getting that guard card worked out well for me. All right? It's not going to be a panic, because again, I was the victim, not... I was the target, not uh, a, a victim. All right? Um, if they had... If it had been either or, they would have gone after the, the victim before they went after the final girl. But this was specifically, I was the, the target. All right. Feeling pretty okay about that. Okay. No panic phase. We're good. All right. So this is going to stay there because that was played. So my question is, I probably am going to not play a focus because I want to keep these two cards I have. This is what I have in my hand right now. Furious Strike, Focus, and a Short Rest. All right. Um, I'm going to keep both of these because I'd like to, if I need to, spend two for a re or for a, a, a two-card. Yeah. Now, you see these little Xs here? What this means is that if I get anything other than two successes, my action phase is going to end. That's what that means. Which I don't really particularly care about. Um, because I'm doing so much damage right now. So, here we go. Furious Strike! Okay, here we go. Come on now. I wish I had a close call card in my hand. Panic from your event. Was there a panic? I, oh! Oh, 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 oh! Whenever a victim enters the meadow or glen. Ryan Way. Thank you. Primrose Flowers. Luckily... Well, thanks to you, we caught it before it would affect anything. Excuse me. So, um, victim did enter the meadow, so they're going to panic. So I'm going to roll one die, and it's going to show which way they move, if any. That was out of the board, but that was a four. So it's going to move this way, if you see that little line. Glen. Did anyone move into the Glen? They must have moved into the Glen, right? Everyone moved other than this one. A one means they're going to go that way. Thank you for catching that, Brian. All right. Very well done. All right, we caught that. Well, not we. Brian caught it. Thank you. Uh, no. No, no. Brian kept us from even a minor asterisk. That's a zero asterisk. I refuse 
refuse to accept any asterisks to this point. Unless you show me I messed something up. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm stalling because I'm worried about this furious strike roll. Here we go. This is very important to me. Very important. Come on, baby. Hey, come on, come on! No! And I've got nothing I can do. I've just freaked out the entire studio. And I've got nothing I can do about that. I don't have a close call card in hand. Oh, that was, I was setting up for such a big play right there. Oh, brutal. That is terrible what that does to me. So what that means is I lose a health. I'm down to three. The horror meter goes up one and my action phase ends. That was terrible. See, this game can go like that. You have to be willing to accept big turns and terrible turns. It's part of it. It's part of it. And it happens both ways. You get these amazing turns where you feel like you are going to do everything you want to do. And then there are turns like that where it's like, I, you know what? It was not meant to be. All right. So that ended my action phase immediately because of the card I played. So uh, now I am going to be purchasing cards. I'm keeping the short rest. I'm keeping the focus. I'm obviously going to be taking my uh, zero cost cards back. So I've got six. I can get four more. I do have six to spend. That is one thing is that I did not spend any time on that. So I think retaliate might not be a bad play. Although I can also get a critical blow card and just keep going all in. I'm down to three health. I don't, they can't do more than one damage me. I'm getting the critical blow. I'm going all in. All in. Probably very stupid. I don't care. Boom. All in. All in. All right. Um, so we did that. Um, return cards. The Furious Strike goes back. The Guard goes back. All right. Now we are going to resolve the killer action. Okay, yeah, I know I need to increase my odds with three dice. I tried, I was trying to get my focus up. It just didn't work out for me. I need to really be careful of this now. I can't let that go down because if that goes down to one, I got nothing. Move towards, they're already there. They're still in hunt mode, all right? So we are gonna turn over a terror card. On the hunt, if they are in stalk mode, which they are. Two move actions, but they're already there. Increase the bloodlust, okay? Um, which also increases the horror. That's awful, right? Frankly, that frightens me a lot. That's really bad, okay? Uh, okay. It's back to me, though, right? Um, because no one was panicked. Oh, boy. Okay, okay. Still rolling two. I kind of feel like I'm going right in on this critical blow. Kind of feel like I need to. All right, here we go. Mike, I'm just going, I'm going to punch, punch the big bad wolf right in the face. That's my hope. All right, here we go. I did so well last time. What could possibly go wrong? Well, what actually, what could go wrong is if I get anything less than two successes, my... Maybe I don't go for critical blow first. I need to save four cards for the weak attack and the critical blow. Uh, I'm gonna do one focus first. Okay, I got a single success to do this and do that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm going to save these because now I'm going to try the weak attack first because the only way this ends my um, event card. Did I miss something? Oh, I did forget an event card. No, I did I? No, it didn't say event card there. You only do an event card if it says event card on this. Okay. Pretty sure that is correct. So, Todd, if you notice on these other ones... They'll show an event card like this. 
You don't just automatically uh, do an event card. All right. Um, pretty sure that's correct. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. All right. I'm going for a weak attack because the reason why I'm not going for the critical blow right now is that I don't want to end my... Uh, yeah. You don't draw events every round. Correct. Okay. Here we go. Weak attack. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That was double... All right, so I do need to get rid of a couple of these. So I'm going to get rid of both of these um, walk cards to turn it into one success, which means I would lose a health. The other thing I could do is just discard both of these, which I'm going to do. I'm discarding all of these, both of these, to make them both successes to give me one hit plus two more for my knives. So that's three more. Boom. Boom. I'm taking a very aggressive uh, mode in this game. All right, critical blow, baby. If I can do this, potentially I can kill the big bad. Although, gosh, it almost, I almost wonder, do I save this? But I could potentially win right here. The other thing that could happen is I can, oof. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. We're going to give it a shot. We're going for the critical blow. Oh, sorry. Let me take this off the screen that's been sitting there. We're going for a critical blow. Here we go. This could be bad. This could be really bad. That was sitting on a star. But however, no successes. Oh, I still do two hits. This could still be it. Okay, so two hits to him. But it's basically four because I've got the knives. This is going to go up and it's going to end my turn. So here's where basically I find out, did I win the game? All right. Um, if this is blank on the back of this, I have won. Boop! You got that, big bad wolf. Got, got. Big bad wolf. Got, got. I think that's it. I think I won. Could that be possible? Could I have won in 42 minutes? That never happens. Now, I think what worked out well for me, although someone tells me come in here that, that, that I messed something up, uh, that may be the case. Um, but I think that's it. I think I won. Um, what was different about this one was I got very, very lucky in... Um, the both knives being kind of available in the items there face up so I can see this is very powerful also first of all having three weapons up there is very powerful all right um, being able to get both of those knives one of them from my final girl card that was huge because every time I'm attacking it's basically hitting for three if I'm successful at all even with a weak attack so that's huge. Um, so since this was a little bit short, let's talk a little bit about some, let's just look through some of this stuff, right? Because, you know, uh, we didn't get to see all of it, all right? Um, so, Big Bad Wolf, let's take a look at their minor dark power card. This one is a sixth sense, which would have ignored damage effects from a reaction card. So basically, retaliate and guard doesn't work anymore, and it puts them into the slay mode, all right? So that was a minor uh, dark action, all right? Or uh, I think the uh, dark power. The major dark power here is Tasty Treats. When revealed, the Big Bad Wolf recovers health for each dead victim. So that could have been huge, depending upon what part in the game. There are others in the box that I, that I can't quite reach, but those are two that you can see in this game. Let's look at some more, uh, let's look at some events. Let's look at some events. Breadcrumb path. So you could have put out breadcrumbs here. Deli, meadow, or clearing. Put a breadcrumb uh, token on them. You can move between they were, these spaces if they were adjacent. Uh, only you and uh, can, can use it and victims can't follow you. So that's cool. It allows you to move around a little bit more. The toll bridge. All right, that's this token here. Put it anywhere on the river so that it touches two spaces. They're now adjacent. You could spend a time to cross them and an additional time if a victim follows you. 
One of the special victims would be the woodsman. Hansel. You got a harmless old woman. The killer is described, described as grandmother. And the victims don't realize it. Any victims in a space adjacent move into their space. That's kind of cool. The Pied Piper. So you, we do have our three uh, special victims there. Travelers. We've got obviously more terror cards that would have come out. Grandma, is that you? All victims move one space towards the big bad wolf. If they're in the slay mode for each victim in the same space or adjacent, that moves the horror meter up, which would be terrible. Take the top card of the village deck, village item deck, which is good, but move and go try to kill the uh, final girl or attack. All the better to eat you. Move two attacks. So again, these are terrible terror cards that I just luckily did not get early on. It's snarled with red glowing eyes. Again, raising the horror meter, raising the bloodlust meter. I also was relatively lucky in how the uh, event cards came out. They did not really affect me terribly. Um, so that worked out well for me. Julie, the designer of this particular box, says, No! And I don't know what that means. Were you rooting against me? Were you rooting against me, Julie? I can't imagine that would be the case. Maybe it is. Um... So there are other uh, items, of course, that we didn't, uh, that not all items are going to be uh, necessarily, we didn't even show them. So let's look at some items too, right? Let's do it. Let's look at some more items we could have encountered since, again, we had a little bit of time. I will say this is the quickest I've ever won a game. Uh, I, I, I really, this worked out very well for me, getting both of these knives and going right at them. Uh, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Discard during the action phase to make a horror roll for each success. You can choose one of these things. That's awesome. Thorny Vines. These vines, you spend a time to place the Thorny Vines token in your spot. If the killer enters a space with them, you discard the token. They take two hits and their killer phase ends immediately. That's pretty fantastic. You've got some candy. Discard during the action phase to make a horror roll with five dice. For each success, do one of those things. That is fantastic. Julie's rooting for fun, question mark. Well, I had fun. Songbirds. If the killer is within two spaces of you, you can spend three times to send the songbirds to attack, doing three damage to the killer. I love it. I've never, I've never actually had that one come up yet. Uh, map. Dur discard during the action phase, and then for each deck of, one, of item cards, do one of the following. If it's face down, reveal it. If it's face up, you can remove it and reveal the next. So... Kind of see what some of the items are. Here's the raft, okay? You place each of the four raft tokens so that each is touching both the river and a raft space. So you've got all of these different spaces here that you could potentially place them on. You know, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. That's just, you know. When one of these, uh, when in one of these spaces, um, you can spend one movement to move to any other spaces with a raft token. You have to spend time for each raft token passed through, including the starting and ending tokens. All right. The pitchfork. This is a double-handed weapon that um, gives you a, a modifier, but you can discard it any time to also prevent all damage from a single attack. That's pretty powerful. Here we've got our chicken bones. Right here we've got these. Spend time to place a Chicken Bones token in your space. If an enemy enters a space with Chicken Bones, discard the token and then deal damage. They're choking on the Chicken Bones. And then you've got some bread here. Discard during the action phase and choose one of the following. Move up three time or move up to three spaces. Woof! Pretty fantastic. All right, well... Again, folks, I don't think that that is... Well, it's not a think. I know that that was not a, a typical uh, result for me anyway. I would say my win percentage in Final Girl, it certainly depends upon the, uh, the feature box that I'm using, but it's probably at about 35, well, no, maybe like 40% um, win. Uh, this just worked out very well. This was a very, very, I feel powerful. I think red, red is what was powerful. And maybe I kind of cheated by also using Selena's... Uh, uh, mini there, so maybe the, the combined forces of Selena and Red were just too powerful for the big bad wolf this time. But uh, yeah, I have a feeling if I were to run this through one more time, I would have a very, very different outcome. But 
This is official. It goes down as a win for Red versus the Big Bad Wolf. And again, this is a sneak peek of Season 2 Final Girl. There are a number of other feature boxes that are going to be coming very soon. Some people may already actually be receiving them. I'm not sure of that. Uh, I have not received mine yet, but I'm keeping an eye on my notifications. What is Red's ability? Uh, I, Neutral Gnome asked, what is Red's ability on the other side? I did uh, show this before, but I will... Actually, let's go back to the table. I'll just show it to you there because it's easier there. So this was once per action phase, if an enemy is within two spaces of you, you may move um, one space for free. Let's also show you, because I think I can reach this one relatively easily, the other final girl here that I could have played with. Could have played with Gretel. There's Gretel, all right. And starts with more health than red and Gretel's final power. You can you may convert a blank two to a success by discarding three action cards. I'm gonna assume that that is specifically a two because there are two blanks, but one of them is numbered a two there. All right, Julie, uh, the designer of this feature box says, should be going out the back or starting in two weeks. Yes! Yes, that's very exciting. Very, very exciting. I am very much looking forward to getting me some more of this. Although I gotta be honest with you, I'm still thrilled playing through my season one stuff. There's not a lack of content here by any means whatsoever. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, friends, children of all ages, although this might be a little scary for some of the younger ones, Hopefully you had a good time. I, I really enjoyed it. I am very, very excited, as I said, to kind of play through some of these new Final Girl uh, feature boxes. This Big Bad Wolf is awesome. Red is awesome. I'm excited. Can I, can I, can you tell I'm excited? I like this stuff. Um, that's going to do it for another episode of The Delicio Factor. Uh, as mentioned earlier, stick around later on. We'll be back at two o'clock for our crowd surfing extravaganza. And uh, there's reviews going up, of course, all kinds of fun stuff happening today. Stay tuned to the Dice Tower. Until next time, this is Mike Delisio signing off victoriously from Dice Tower headquarters. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>